Again this week, the videos will explore the various teaching methodologies used in adult education. We will describe two additional approaches, active and thinking or problem-solving methodologies, and we'll examine the advantages and disadvantages of each. By the end of these videos, you should be in a position to recognize when each method would be most appropriate and how to maximize each one's use. This particular video will provide an overview of the activity-focused learning methodologies. During this video, please reflect on the following analysis questions. Why are active learning methodologies used in adult education? When might active learning best be used? What are the advantages and disadvantages of active learning? And what are good practices associated with active learning? A wealth of research over the past several decades, both into pedagogy and neurology, has convinced most educators that active engagement in the learning process results in improved motivation and learning among students. Having students passively listening to information delivered through traditional lectures not only leads to wandering attention, but it fails to provide an opportunity to check for understanding. Integrating frequent activities helps students stay engaged in the learning, allows them to extend, apply, and judge their mastery of the content, and allows the teacher to check for comprehension before moving on to the next topic. Active learning activities can be used to break up more passive modes such as lecturing, or as a main learning mode, replacing lectures altogether. In recent years, educators have been experimenting with what is often called the flipped classroom approach, in which content is delivered via online means and is meant to be reviewed independently by students prior to class. Class time is then dedicated to interactive experiences designed to consolidate, extend, or apply the content learned online. There are a multitude of learning activities that can be used by teachers of adults, including activities that can be used spontaneously and repeatedly, such as Think, Pair, Share, in which a student takes time to consider the answer to a question, checks their answers with a peer, and then shares their answers with the class as well as activities that require more planning and time, such as things like a traveling file where small groups complete a small portion of a task and then pass it on. These techniques are generally content neutral and can be used with a broad diversity of material. However, some are better suited to specific disciplines or type of content than others. Attention should be paid to the specific goal and desired outcome of each learning activity when choosing, as well as the available time and resources. There are multiple online and print resources for active learning techniques that can be implemented in the adult learning classroom. The active learning approach has the following advantages. It makes classes more interesting for both students and teacher and maintains attention by providing diversity in delivery modes. It addresses diverse student learning styles by providing variety in delivery and reception of content. The repetition and application involved in activities associated with material just learned assist the students in consolidating and retaining the material, and learning activities provide practice with new content. Activities often engage both the body and the emotions as well as the intellect, leading to better retention and more meaningful engagement. Students tend to enjoy the social interaction involved in active learning and activity-based learning, which may therefore encourage class attendance. Finally, it also builds higher order thinking skills which are critical to academic and employment success. Though activity-based learning is recommended for most adult learning situations, it is best used in situations in which the content requires application or extension to be best understood. The content is best learned in a cumulative or step-by-step -step fashion. The students will be evaluated on their ability to extend or apply the content, and the teacher is familiar with good practices and the appropriate implementation of learning activities. Apart from the effort required to design and prepare for learning activities, the most frequent criticism of active learning is that they take time away from covering the content. However, given that the research on learning indicates that passive listening is one of the least effective ways for content to be learned, investment of class time in learning activities would seem a wise choice. In addition, however, the teacher may need to set the stage for active learning by explaining the pedagogy and rationale for its choice. During learning activities, it's important to monitor student engagement with the content and keep students on task by circulating throughout the room if possible. While active learning can take place even in large lecture halls, complex activities are best implemented with small to medium sized groups in classroom with flexible seating arrangements. These conditions are not always available, which requires flexibility and imagination to compensate for their lack. Choose this approach when students will be required to apply or extend their learning. Investigate the wealth of learning activities available and select one suitable for the level and complexity of your content. Also become confident about the process for facilitating the activity and ensure you have all the needed resources on hand. 
When learning activities involve students teaching students, ensure resources or handouts are available to provide backup. Plan sufficient time for the implementation of learning activities. They don't all have to be lengthy, but students' engagement in them should not be rushed. Monitor engagement in the activity by circulating and redirect wandering conversations without taking over the activity. Develop strategies for ending the activity and regrouping as a class. Include time to debrief and check for understanding after learning activities. Where possible, include a step that allows you, the teacher, to check for accuracy and understanding after a learning activity. Build in self, peer, or classroom checks for accuracy so that students can judge their emerging mastery of the content. Feedback on practice should be as immediate as possible. Don't use learning activities frivolously. Have a concrete pedagogical purpose for each one and explain its use to students. While variety is engaging, you don't have to always introduce new types of activities constantly. Repeating suitable activities with different content allows students to concentrate on the content instead of the mechanics of the activity. Please reflect on the following synthesis questions. Which philosophy of adult learning is most consistent with the active learning approach? Would active learning be more likely to be used in formal, informal, or non-formal adult education? What adult education providers would be most likely to use active learning? And how might active learning methods be combined with other approaches? And in what ways could this combination address some of the disadvantages or limitations of active learning?